Fast Forward Productions. The women are speaking. Hi guys, welcome back to The Unfiltered Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Ashley Pollard. Today's episode is truly one of the most incredible women I've ever met. I'm 0% exaggerating. Erica Reitman is one of those women that you stumble across online and you're like, how can I be you? I am obsessed with you. You are so confident. You are so creative. You are so smart. You are so kind. She's just like one of those people that you're like, oh, you can be a perfect person. Like she's just unbelievable. I'm obsessed obsessed with this woman. And the reason I'm obsessed with her is because she's kind of unlocked a formula for why I am obsessed with her. She's going to share that with us today. It's a very beautiful way to kind of understand authenticity and originality. But I'm just in love with her. I'm in awe of her. And I hope that you see how incredible she is herself. So why don't we take it away for this episode? Thanks for joining us, Erica. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Unfiltered Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm so excited for you to be here. This is making my entire day. <laughs> well, it's making mine too. So the feeling is mutual. You know, you're one of those people that I met and instantly I was like, I could read not even like a book, but like a book series about your life. I just already know that. I feel like your song who's like lived a million lives. Like, tell me, am I wrong? I love that compliment so much because even when I was a little girl, like constantly, my mom would be like, are you seven or 42? Like, I just don't get it. So I love compliments like that. And I just so appreciate it. So I think that's one of the beautiful things about social media because there's lots of shitty stuff about it. But I just feel like it gives us the opportunity to connect with people that we probably never would have met otherwise in a way that's really meaningful because I had the same feelings about you. I immediately was like, all right, I am all in. I want to know this chick. Let's be friends. I'm ready to go. And now we are, which is like the most beautiful thing. Like we have to go on a call. I have to know everything about you. You know, a lot of like what you talk about is like being an icon in your business. And first of all, I want to know where that came from because so much of our story is rooted in like the way that we market ourselves and things like that. And if you guys are watching on YouTube versus listening to the podcast, you'll see that Eric and I are dichotomous at the moment. I'm like the beige minimalist with my sleek back hair and my grandpa cardigan. And Eric is over here with the most beautiful adornments, like looking stunning, very like Coco, like add one thing when you before you walk out the door. I always love your vibe. I love your style. <laughs> And I'm wondering, like, have you always felt comfortable expressing yourself in a big way? No, absolutely not. I will say that I have always kind of been like this. I've always been the one who had a different idea of how to do things. I remember so clearly being in elementary school and getting put in a group with three other people. The assignment was... I'm old, so like this wasn't a thing back then, but we had to figure out how to make recycling more a part of our everyday and like bring it forward and get people comfortable with it. And I was the one in the group who had the crazy idea. Everyone else had the obvious ideas like let's put recycling cans in different spots and games and stuff like that. And I always felt like I was the one who had the weird ideas. And when you're a kid, it's not cool necessarily to be the one who stands out, to be the one with those unusual ideas. And I remember really specifically like telling my brain, okay, like shut off a little bit here, buddy. Okay. You don't need to bring all of this attention to yourself, which I think is something else for women of a certain age. I was very much taught, don't brag, don't make yourself the center of attention, let other people take the spotlight. And so that all for many years worked against me, I think, because I didn't want to be the different one. And I think at some point in college, probably, I realized like, you know what? My crazy ideas are sometimes really fucking good. And most people don't have the ability to come up with ideas like this. So why am I hiding it? I may as well get yep. into it. This is who I am. This is who I'm always going to be. And that's, I remember when I really kind of embraced it and realized this isn't something that you need to be ashamed of. This is something you should be proud of. So when you had that realization that now my mind's like going a million miles a minute, right? I feel like I had that realization really young 
young because I was bullied really badly. And I took the position. My mom's like kind of a badass. You know, she's like a Harley babe who's like, don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with my family. You know what I mean? And so when I was really young, she was like, fuck them, you know, about these people bullying me. And she was like, go bigger into who you are. If they don't like you, make them hate you then, you know, like that's kind of her energy. And so I feel like at a young age, I was just kind of like, I don't give a shit about any of you people. I'm going to do whatever I want. You don't like me anyway. That happened to me when I was pretty young. So I just kind of like always had some sort of embodiment of that, even in a small way. But when I hear people later than childhood have a realization where you're like, I want to take up a little bit more space. My question is like, did you go zero to a hundred or was it just like, let me add pieces throughout time, you know? Yeah, I think it was a little bit slower than like zero to a hundred. And I really think that for most people, this isn't the case across the board, but so often I'll get asked like, how do you show up on social media like you do and share everything and you just don't care? And I really do think it takes practice. The fact that that happened to you, I mean, what an incredible gift that your mother gave you. Because I can't even imagine the lives that we would all be living if we had that same understanding and messaging when we were kids. I mean, maybe things have changed and that's more common now, but no, I fully believe, I fully believe that it was a cornerstone of my life, to be honest, because we were just built from day one that like failure is not trying. Like we could make mistakes, fuck all this shit up. We could do whatever we wanted. We had so much autonomy. You know, I work with all these people in the doers and I can't figure out how I'm different from them because it can't be like genetics. You know, there's too many people in there for me to be like different from all of them or maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. The only thing I can think of is my mom. Like I truly, that's really the only thing that I can narrow it down to is the fact that when we were growing up, it was very much like, you want to do that, then do it. You want to do it, then do it. You want to do it, then do it. Who cares what they think? They suck. They're stupid. We hate them. You could do whatever you want. You know, like your mom was the original president of the Zero Fucks Club. Which I just think, too, I joke, like getting into that club is the toughest application you will ever get approved in your entire life. Forget about Soho House. Forget about anywhere else. But once you're in, man, your whole freaking life will change and your whole business will change. And what's your experience with that? Like, you know, you started to make that shift you said in college, you know, start to say, like, I'm going to take up more space, take up more space, like. What did that look like for you? I think it was, and again, this was practice for me. This was a realization. But coming to understand that as much as I would love to, I simply cannot control other people's feelings and behavior. The only person I can do that with is myself. And realizing that actually felt like freedom to me. Because I finally realized if I can't control what anyone else is thinking or doing, I may as well just show up and say exactly what I want to say. I mean, it's just what you were talking about and share all my crazy ideas and just not give a fuck. And I think because I'm in Generation X, which it's so funny to me that most people just don't even like talk about us or know about us. I'm kind of fascinated with that. But we're genuinely like, I grew up, there was no internet. That was not a thing. So I have like one foot in this world without social media and the internet, and one foot very much in it because I've always been someone who's loved it and played with it. And social media has definitely played a big role. For a lot of people who maybe, you know, their application is still being considered for the Zero Fucks Club and they haven't quite gotten in yet, but they're trying. But social media, sometimes it can be a cesspool and it really puts you in a position where you are, I'm just like, there's no way around this. You are going to be judged. People are going to say mean things to you. It's just, and if it hasn't happened to you yet, I'm very glad for you. But just get ready because it's going to happen at some point. And I think really figuring out a way to deal with that and still show up every day as the real you and share your real deal opinions and not be afraid that you shouldn't show up and do that because angry mom 22 is going to leave a mean comment. Right. I tell people sometimes in the doers, like, if you are worried about showing up because you don't know how people are going to react, then you are 
in essence, trying to manipulate people. If we start to view it as like, I'm manipulating you by presenting myself a certain way, it's such a shift because we don't want to be manipulative, but aren't we? If we're kind of showing up in a way that like, if I do X, they do Y, you're manipulating a situation, right? Instead, you know, what is the one thing you can control? That's why I'm a big proponent of therapy, you know, therapy over coaching, therapy before at the beginning of entrepreneurship, it drums up a lot of insecurity throughout, you know, but it drums up a lot of trauma. It's just one of those trigger cesspools, you know? So instead of saying like, if I do this, then they'll do this or I'll be accepted or I'll feel calm. Instead, it's almost like if I do this for myself, I'll feel calm. Like shifting the focus into like, how do I ground and center myself and regulate myself versus if I do what they want, then maybe they'll like me. And it's just, it's a losing game, what they want. That is ever changing and very, very hard to define. I mean, this summer I found a subreddit full of hundreds of people talking about me. I mean, it's literally the worst case scenario. If you're afraid to show up online as the real you, that is legit the worst case scenario you could possibly think about. And I will admit, it took me out for the weekend because, of course, I read all of the stuff that people were saying about me and they were talking about my looks and the way I talked and the things that I said, my husband questioning our relationship. I mean, I was blown away. And I thought to myself, like, is it worth it to have to deal with something like that? And I eventually came to the point where I just said, I am not going to let a bunch of fucking loser strangers in a forum somewhere. I don't know them. I don't respect them. I don't want to know them or respect them. And I'm not going to let them get in the way of what I know I want to do. The things that are important to me showing up, building my community, connecting, all of that. I am not going to let these complete fucking asshole strangers get in the way of me doing that. And here I am still showing up. So yeah, you know, it's, first of all, I want to come back to that because it's a very poignant situation and you and I share a similar, mine wasn't Reddit, but I've been there. But also, you know, it comes back to this idea that like, well, first of all, there's two things. One is like, you and I are people who are kind of rebelling against the good girl mentality. And I think that's a big part of this is like stepping into your power kind of means saying, I'm not going to be your precious little good girl anymore. The reason why I say that is because I think that people say, wait, you don't respect them, but like we should be respecting everybody. Everybody deserves respect. And it's like, I don't respect you though. Like I don't respect you if you're going to go talk like that about someone or like maybe I have like been at brunch and talked about someone. I don't deserve that person's respect. I'm disrespecting them. So I think that like being okay, not having respect for everybody and treating everybody with kindness Kindness. It's like, I'm not going to go out of my way and go be nasty to these people, but I'm definitely not going to like hold you in my arms and ask you if you're okay later. Like that's not going to happen, which leads me to the other thing that things makes me think of, which is like that quote, I don't accept criticism from people I don't accept advice from. Would I come to you and say, do you like my outfit? If not, then fuck you with all due respect. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I think that's true even in like good situation. I mean, we're talking about kind of a negative situation, but I all the time, you know, with my clients, they'll come to me and say, well, I was talking to my friend about my idea for this new offer and she just didn't get it. And I'll be like, your friend has a corporate job, is not your ideal client, has never been an entrepreneur, has never launched. Like, why are you asking your friend? What do you think she's going to say? You're doing the thing that for her is absolutely terrifying that she would never do. Of course, that's her advice. Yeah, when we send, so at Dial Zero Marketing, my marketing agency, when we send branding off the first round, we say, do not share this with anybody. This is yours to sit on, to contemplate, to dive into. If you want to share it with someone, it has to be someone who's making the same level of executive decisions about your business as you, and that's it. And then sit on it for 24 hours, revisit it in 24 hours and then come to us with suggestions because your brother saying that he doesn't like that color or it doesn't seem like you like hire them then so I mean I totally get it you know like ask advice from the people who are really going to be people who've walked those shoes before I think is the important way to think about it yeah if you don't want to be a basic bitch stop asking basic bitches for advice 
totally. That's like somebody told me once I'm single and not looking. But he said to me, like, you wouldn't be so single if you were taking advice from single people about dating. You should be asking married people about dating. And I'm like, no, I should be asking married people about marriage. And you're not understanding what I'm talking about. Then go to the people who are doing what you're doing. Anyway, we were talking about something that I wanted to circle back to, which was, see, it already escaped me. But I do want to talk about this becoming the icon idea. Can you tell me a little bit more about I feel like, tell me if I'm wrong, this feels kind of like the cornerstone of your brand. Yeah, I love to come up with ways to share concepts and ideas with my clients, with my community that I feel like could potentially resonate. And this is an interesting one for me because I do feel like oftentimes people are uncomfortable with this idea because they think that I am saying I am basically the equivalent of Oprah or Cher or Dal. Like you think of the icons that we all can pretty much agree on out in the world. And you think that I'm saying I am that person and you should be that person. But really, I just love this concept. Like when you think of an icon, you think of Beyonce. And I saw that documentary of hers where she was performing at Coachella and she rehearsed for like six plus months every single day for this one freaking performance. And the level that these people People operate at and the excellence that they bring to absolutely everything that they do is so freaking inspiring to me. And I just started thinking about what is that version, the version of that for me in my life, in my business? Obviously, I am not a celebrity, so I am not performing at Coachella or doing things like that. But what would it look like if I was showing up every single day in my own life and in my own business as the iconic version of Erica? How would this version of me show up to a client? How would this version show up to a podcast interview? What does that look like? And that felt like so fun to me. And it just felt like such an incredible way to dream bigger for myself that that's why I started using that word and that concept. And I do really, really love it. I love it too. You know, I feel like it reminds me of that quote where it's like, think of your best self and start showing up as her. You know, because did Ashley Pollard want to work out today? No. But does my best self work out in the morning? Yes, she does, that bitch. So I want to show up as my best self. I have to make the same decisions as her. I tell people sometimes, like, entrepreneurship is an Olympic sport. And if you want a million-dollar business and a million-dollar life and the private jet and the big mansion, which personally don't want those things, if you do, more power to you. But if you want those things, you are vying for a spot in the Olympics. If you want Forbes 30 under 30, you know how many people make that list? 30 in the country. So if you want one of those spots, you have to fight like an Olympian, which means every single day you are exerting energy and you're resting hard because recovery is just important as the training. And you have to really think about it that like, if you want to be the best in your town, that's fine. If you want to be the best in your state, fine. If you want to be the best in your region, the best in your country, you have to think about the level at which you want to perform. And it's okay to be the best in your town. You know, it's okay to be someone who charges $700 for social media and has four clients and makes $2,800 a month and no VA and no website and no anything. That's part of, there's literally nothing wrong with that. It's different than what I might want, but I want to operate at a different level and I have different wants and different paths. So my question for you is that like, if someone wants to become an icon, but they don't feel like they're the person who's like flashy, you know, and outwardly showing it, what what are ways that people can embody that becoming the icon vibe internally if they're maybe shy or introverted. Yeah. Well, that is the beauty of this because I really do think it is what does this look like for you? I show up on social media a certain way. You show up a certain way. That is not the required way to do it. And so you really have to go through the process of figuring this out for yourself. And for me, it has been really helpful to take this idea. And as you just said, The iconic version of Ashley goes to the gym every fucking day. You get to choose who you're showing up as that morning. 
Ashley now or the iconic version of yourself? And so if you can look at these different situations in your life, and it doesn't have to be business. I mean, it could be health. If you really want to go all in on your health right now, what would the iconic version of yourself do in that situation? Would you hire a trainer? And I want you to think about this or journal about this in a way where you are removing all of the restrictions that your brain is just going to put on this. Because you're going to come up with an idea and your dick brain is going to be like, well, yeah, you can't do that because blah, blah, blah. And you your sister's going to make fun of you if you do that. Your mom's not going to like it. Your clients are going to leave. Whatever it exactly. is. Exactly. If money was no object and responsibilities were not there, what would this look like for you? Now, I am not saying you'll be able to do every single thing on this list. But every time I do this, I have this realization that... A lot of the things that I want to do are very doable now. If I get creative, if I figure out how I can make things happen for myself in a way that makes sense for my life right now, like, wow, this isn't as hard as I thought it was. So I just think that exercise is so great. And look, we all have different goals. We all have different things that we're focusing on. And again, doesn't have to be business related, but this is very effective too when you apply it to your business as well. So pick one thing, grab a notebook, grab a journal, and just let yourself dream about what this thing could look like. And then choose one or two things on the list and make it happen. Get committed. Figure out a way to do it. Get creative and see how you feel in a month. Yeah. You know, I like the month because it's like, just wear a different outfit, like not physically, but like, you know, metaphorically put on a different outfit for a month. Like it just try it out, see what it's like, feel it out. It's a beautiful, powerful exercise too, to really tap into like, what would I look like without restrictions? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And what are some things that you tend to notice with people when they start doing this? Do you see a lot of like resistance? Do you see people really feeling more confident, like when someone starts really embodying that, what kind of like waves do they go through when this happens? Yeah. I mean, I think there's suspicion and resistance at first, because again, I don't feel like particularly as women of a certain age, this whole idea just seems crazy. Like, oh, I'm allowed to dream as big as I want for myself. And then figure out a way to execute it. I mean, it sounds silly as I'm saying this to you now, but again, I say this all the time. Our brains are dicks. Our brains are literally scientifically programmed to keep you doing exactly what you're doing now because what you're doing now is safe. Even if intellectually you don't like it and you want to do something different, your dick brain doesn't care. So there is absolutely going to be resistance to this. I mean, I think too, the first response is like, intrigue and curiosity, like I actually could maybe do this. And then they go through the exercise and they come up with some of these things. And then it feels a little scary because you have this like wave of emotions. Like, am I even allowed to want these things? Am I even allowed to like want to figure out a way to pay for something or do something that's not in my life right now? And then they start to do it. And there is this insane level of like confidence and this feeling of accomplishment when you actually are executing the things that you had been dreaming about in a way that is proving to your dick brain that this possibility is available to you. Like the confidence and the feelings around this, like they are so freaking powerful that it really can be a game changer for a lot of people. I can imagine, you know, and I think that sometimes people are maybe holding on to like a past version of them that kept them safe. You know, I think that is what our brain is doing more than anything. I want you to feel safe because your brain tells you if you're not safe, you're going to be attacked by a lion. And you're not being attacked by lions many times these days. We're in the Western world. And so I think that's kind of what our brain is doing is saying, like, if you go out of bounds, you'll lose community. If you lose community, you can't forage for food together. And who's going to take care of the babies? And then you'll be left alone. And if you're left alone, you won't have a camp. And if the lions come, you'll get eaten by a lion. It's like, that's really what your brain is doing. And by understanding that psychology, you're able to say, OK, I'm not being attacked by lions. 
And that's something I say sometimes to the doers where I'll be like, are you going to get struck by lightning? Okay, well then like, let's try it. You know, like, let's see what the worst thing that happens is you feel uncomfortable. Let's learn how to feel uncomfortable comfortably, you know, like let's learn how to do that in a supported way. It's fascinating because you will seem empowered. Like you have a glow about you that is so aligned and authentic, I think is just like the word, just like radiating. And we touched on a little bit about like, I have this switch. And then we talked about now, like I'm embodying this. And so I want to kind of know, like in the middle, what was the trial and error like? Were there versions of you you put on that you're like, that's not me? <laughs> totally. Because it's a process for you to go through as well. You don't just like make the decision and immediately you're like, oh, I'm going to show up on social media like this. I'm going to start sharing like this. For me, it really was a process. And that's why I think, too, you know, this idea we keep talking about your brain, it's required, too, for your brain as well to start, like, understanding who this new version of you is, to start getting used to it, to start, like, building those synapses so that it all makes sense. And so I say all the time, too, I often, again, will have people who say, like, I want to be more authentic online. I want to share more on social media. I don't know how to do it or it feels really scary. And I think people mostly will go to this idea of, like, having to share their deepest, darkest, most painful secret immediately. I mean, you can if you want to, but that's not what authenticity means. I just want to get to know you. The vulnerable thing you could share is like my favorite genre is unsupervised rich teenagers. And show, book, or movie about unsupervised rich teenagers, I am there. I love it. It seems so silly. The amount of people I have bonded with over this who are like, ooh, I never really knew how to describe it, but me too. Like that is an authentic piece of me. It doesn't mean this is something I worked out in therapy, but it's a way for me to share who I am in the world aside from my business persona, which is important to you and I get it out there. But the other thing I will say too is I find it's way more fun to show up on social media and to be online on a regular basis, which I do think is a requirement these days. If you have a business in this world like we do, it's way more fun to do it when you give yourself permission and you get used to showing up as you. You're not in your head so much like, hiding this or not talking about that and allowing yourself the space to sometimes not talk about business. I mean, I cannot tell you how many people I work with who are like, yeah, but that's not business related. People are going to be confused. No, they're not. No, they're not. Well, they're grown they're adults. Smart. I can just say that all the time to people. I'm like, grown adults. We're yeah. talking about grown adults. They can walk and chew gum at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. So I really do think like dip your toe in. If this is something that you want to do, if this is something you want to do in your life, in your business online, you don't have to start with the most painful thing that's ever happened to you in your life. Maybe you don't ever want to talk about that. That's okay too. This is a reminder. You choose the things that you talk about and you don't. I talk about my depression all the time and that I'm medicated and not trying to get off, which is, again, a controversial thing for a lot of people. I talk about the decision my husband and I made not to have kids and that it was the best decision I've ever made and that I wake up every morning excited about this decision. Anytime I say that, I get such hate, such judgment. Why do you have to say you're excited about it? What does that mean? Like, what does that say about who you are? Like, these are it comments. says that I am who I am and I'm ha excited about it. That's what it says, bitch. Right. Exactly. Uh -huh. So it's something that you have to practice. It's like a muscle. You will get better and better at it the more that you do it. Give yourself the space to experiment and to figure out what is most comfortable for you because that's the most important thing. It reminds me very much of the niche down conversation which makes me want to take my hair in bundles and rip it clean off my fucking head. Because when people say niche down, niche down, what, sorry if you say that, <laughs> but when people say like niche down, niche down, niche down, what I'm hearing is choose today who you're going to be for the next year or two years or five years or whatever, right? And what you're kind of saying is that like becoming that person is a lot of process of elimination, it's 40 things that you're doing that you say goodbye to. It's The Bachelor. It's say, here's a room of 50 people. Let's get rid of 20 on the first night. 
Now let's get rid of five. Then let's get rid of three. Then we get rid of two. And now we have two standing. And I know kind of like, first of all, it's not The Bachelor, it's entrepreneurship. So you can do both of them. But I kind of noticed when I went into entrepreneurship, I thought that my strong suit was talking about copy because a lot of my background was in copy and was used in my sales career. And so I was talking a lot about copy. And then when I started talking about product suite, people were like, what's that? Tell me more. Tell me more about pricing. Tell me more about pricing psychology. And so I started talking a lot about product suite and that became the thing. Anytime I talked to somebody about my take on product suite, people were like, holy shit, that's mind blowing. So it's process of elimination. It's talking about a ton of different things and saying, wait, they're really responding to this. I also really like talking about this. For instance, a lot of people loved it when I was talking about you know, social media and content. Do I have a social media agency? Yes. Do I like talking about it on TVP Consulting? No. And even though people ask me about it, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it. I get to make that decision just like you were talking about. And so I think a lot of it is like process of elimination and really finding yourself through doing a lot of things, which means you're going to fail at a lot of them and fail not in a way that you like totally rock it. And some client is like, Pissed, but you're probably not going to like figure out the process correctly. It's going to feel really like, I can't figure this out. This doesn't feel natural. And you're going to start noticing some things feel more natural. And whether that's in business or whether that's in style or expression or self awareness, like the, there's this process of elimination that kind of you start to notice. I kind of keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I think that's where identity is really built. And you have to be brave enough to start with that really wide offering of let's just try a shit ton of stuff and I'm not going to be good at most of it. Yeah. Do you agree? Totally. And I think one of the really important pieces that I just took from what you said, which again, I see all the time, is that I think we often forget that we change as human beings. So yes, I have my business. Yes, I have the things right now that I'm excited about and I'm talking about. Those are different than they were Five years, five years ago, I was like the Instagram girl. I was teaching courses about Instagram. I would die if I had to do it. It's just not me anymore. I have said all throughout my business, I am never doing a membership. Memberships are not for me. I know you have the same experience. I'm about to launch a membership. It wasn't a fit for me before. It is now. And we forget like we change as human beings. Like we grow. We want different things. Our needs shift. And that is a piece of how we need to be looking at our business and showing up. So even you talk about this process of elimination, I'm sorry, it's not a one-time thing. You have to always, always, always be doing this. Because if not, you're going to wake up one day and be burnt out and hate your business and hate all your customers and clients and not know why. And that, you know that's true. To your point, like, I feel like I very much know who I am and how I like showing up and what I like doing. But like, I don't live here. I just am here for the foreseeable future. That future could be five years. That future could be six months. And I might say, I don't think this is me anymore. I'm going to go do this other thing now. That could happen. I tell people all the time. And I think that people lose it. I not even think. People lose it when I say this. I say, oh, I'm going to close down Team AP Consulting in probably three years. Like, I got, I got shit to do. Now, here's the thing. I might change my mind and keep it. I might change my mind and sell it. I might you know, get rid of it in six months. I won't, guys, don't freak out. But I think that people think that like when you, that it's a marriage and it's like, no, this is a journey. This is like a car you're traveling in. And it's such a gift because I think back to my days in corporate America where changing one fucking thing about the way we were doing stuff required the approval of 78 people, a year of meetings, and then nothing would happen anyway. The fact that you get to run a business where you can come up with an idea and a week later have people sending you thousands of dollars based on this idea you came up with in the shower. It's incredible. I couldn't agree more. You know, and people say like, I don't know if I want to be an entrepreneur anymore. Like it would be so much less stressful to have a full-time job. It's different stress. You have to choose which type of stress you're opting into. But like, I don't know. Ever. Now, granted, I've worked like in aggressive industries in aggressive cities, but like I've never had a job that I'm just like, 
oh, I get to come in at nine and leave every day at five and you don't bother me outside of work hours and all of my work is super easy and everybody works really well together and everybody's kind. Like you could not pay me money to get my ass back into another person's office. In no world is that going to happen. And I think it's just so funny because we forget how much of a gift this is. And when you figure out a way to make any sort of money, whether it's $500 or 500000 seeing that you can make money out of nowhere with nothing but your skill set and your mind and a fucking machine in your back pocket, it is liberation. And it's such a wild and powerful opportunity for women specifically, I feel. I totally agree. I totally agree. I'm curious, like... What is the thing that you don't tell people that motivates you in your business? I'll kind of share what I'm getting at here. You know, I grew up in a house where like my mom couldn't really leave a bad situation, right? And I'm open about it and I don't go further than that. But to me, I saw somebody who like with the right resources could have had a much easier life. And it's something that I've carried with me my whole life is like this women's empowerment thing. You know, when I went off to college, somebody asked me like, what's your why with college? And I was like, I want to figure out a way to open doors for women. I said that at 17 years old. Then I started my first business, Room for All, which was a women's empowerment business. It's like, I've always kind of been in this space because I saw somebody who I was like, there's so much better for you. And I saw it as a child. And that's kind of been like my personal mission. And I think we all have to kind of tap into like, what is the trauma or like, what is the depth or it doesn't even have to be negative. What is like a shift that happened to you at some point that now is such a part of your journey? It's so unique and specific to you. I'm curious, like, do you have anything that you were like, this is always something I'm going to fight for because it's so unique and special to me? It doesn't have to be as traumatic as what I said, you know, but like, is there anything like so special? I mean, I think for me, it really just is this idea that I know that this happened to me and I see it with clients too, is that there is so much more available to you in your business, in your life, in this world than you probably are aware of right now. And doing the big, crazy, amazing things that you dream about. Some people, like they, I talk to people, they have dreams, like they feel so crazy to them that they don't even talk about them with other people. Because to even say them out loud feels so scary and overwhelming. And I just have seen in my life again and again and again, I mean, we moved to Mexico five years ago. Like, look, there are a lot of privileges that I enjoy as somebody who is living the life as a white woman. You know, all of that played into it. But also, I have to tell you, moving to Mexico was not that hard. Doing this big, amazing, fun thing that for my husband and I just felt like this is something we want to do. And we had planned to come here, by the way, for six months. And the first month we were here, we were like, what if we just don't go back to L.A.? And that is what we did. So... I just, I love, love, love to see other women too, especially living these big lives, doing these things that feel far away for them, but that they can get in touch with the fact that they want and just helping them get there, helping them figure out a way to make them real for themselves. And I just have seen that this whole online business space is such a great way to do that. It's right now, and look, things I'm sure will change, but It's so democratized at the moment that if you could just come up with a little bit of chutzpah, which is a Yiddish word that just means like a little bit of like wherewithal to get yourself out there, to try the crazy thing, to do the crazy thing, there is so much opportunity available for you. And I just want us all to get rich together. Yeah, I mean, girl, same. It sounds like you're one of those people that like the thing that pushes you is like the veil was lifted as far as opportunity. And you're one of those people where you're like, I have to shout this from, why don't more people know this? You know, it feels like that's kind of like what's coming through for me. A hundred percent. And I did, I have been lucky enough to have those crazy moments. Like my last corporate job, I was making, I think, 120K a year. I have had- Well, you and I both. That's so funny. Yeah. I have had months where I have earned that amount of money in one month. It doesn't happen every single month for me. But when that happened and I realized I was working 60, 70, 80 hours a week with people that I- hated and didn't respect at a job that was not fulfilling me, coming up with ideas all the time that just died on the vine. And 
I did this in one freaking month, in one week, in one case. And so the power of that, again, this doesn't happen to me every single month. But me achieving that, even achieving like a tenth of that is just so freaking cool because it just puts the reins back in my hands. And it's just such a great living example of the fact that there is so much opportunity out there for you, whatever it is that you want. And it doesn't need to be money related. It doesn't need to be viral video related. There are so many amazing things that people are working on and doing. I just, again, my favorite quote is a rising tide lifts all boats. To me, that is just it. If I can help as many people as I possibly can, and I think this is something important to remember too for those of us that do have online businesses. I'm lucky enough to have a pretty decent sized community. 99% of the people in my community right now are not buying shit from me. That's just the way that it is. I can still make a lot of money and have a lot of fun in my business with the few people that are, but I am constantly thinking about how am I showing up for those 99% of the people that are investing their time in me every single day, whether it's watching a video or sending me a DM. How am I showing up for them? Yeah, that's so valid, you know, like, and I think that there's a difference because I know what you're saying is like, how can I consistently double down in my platform, right? You're not saying I'm indebted to you. I'm required to. You're saying knowing what I know, how can I continue to be a resource, continue to inspire, continue to support you? And I think that that's something I'm trying to like unwind a lot with people in the doers is this idea that like, you are indebted to your audience. This idea of like, how can I, like, I want to always be sharing for them and sharing for them. And what I tend to see is then like apologies that they didn't show up for two days that week or saying things like, I know I've been really bad on social guys, forgive me. I've just been like really distracted. You're not indebted to anybody. That's a marketing tool. And the people that are say you and I, for instance, who are saying things like, I want to consistently be showing up for you. It's because we want to be in service with our marketing. And that doesn't have to always be the case. With Dial Zero Marketing, we are not in service. We post recent projects when they happen or when we feel like it. And that's it. You know, on my personal page, I post whenever I feel creative and feel like doing it. So I think it's also important to say that, like, what you're saying is I want to guide you. You know, I want to be a leader. I want to empower people. And that makes me so, so inspired because it's one of those things that we need more people showing possibility than showing answers sometimes. You know, I think that both are really important. And I love that you're kind of taking the stand of like, I want you guys to see what you can do. Cut the shit. Let's do big things together. Let's feel empowered. Let's feel great. Yeah. No gatekeeping. No. Yeah. Erica, I'm just obsessed with you. You. I want to just sit down in Mexico and hang out with you for a week. You know what I mean? I'm in Mexico City now. Yeah. Oh, I heard such good things. It's really so incredible. It's interesting because the first question that most people ask is, is it safe? And I understand like the media in the United States makes it seem like people are getting kidnapped every day and you're going to get into some sort of like battle with the cartel. That just has not been my experience here. I feel safer mm-hmm. here than I did in LA. People do the same thing with New York. Every time I'm in New York, people I'm related to or people that are online, they're like, is New York safe to visit again? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm walking, I haven't seen shit. Like, in old town, I've seen crazy people before, you know what I mean? Like, in the city. So if I saw them today, then I saw them again, you know? It's just one of those things, like, I think I probably don't even pay attention to that shit anymore because people are always like, New York is like so unsafe now. And I'm like, okay, visit and tell me otherwise, because I promise you, you're not going to have the same experience than you think you are. Yes. And I will say the same thing about Mexico City. The food here is incredible. I can't can't even imagine. It's such a green city, too, which, you know, New York has Central Park. Like, it is so pleasant to walk around here because of the trees and the parks and the it really is just so magical that's amazing i'm so excited for you what's next for you well any tricks up our sleeves or carrying on or like what what's the plan for you well so i am about to launch our membership which we are calling one and the idea behind this membership is i want to bring together a group of other entrepreneurs who like me are obsessed with this idea of becoming a category of 
everyone in their industry. So you're not afraid to stand out from the crowd. You want to stand out from the crowd. You're done following the trends. You want to create the trends. And we're putting it together in a way that because this is my favorite thing to do. And I think you've done this with the doers too, but it doesn't look like everyone else's membership. You know, most of them are built around the idea of learning a specific skill. And I think that's great. But this for me is more about bringing people together so that we all can become the coolest people in the room, so that we all can be doing amazing things in our businesses that have people like, how do she come up with that idea. Oh my God, that's so cool. And supporting each other and sharing all of the ideas and the resources and just doing it together, getting rich together. Getting rich in life and rich in pockets. You know what I'm saying, Erica? Yes, totally. One dollar and a dream at a time. Thank you for doing this. You are so generous. I always try to like get people to listen to the podcast because selfishly, I'm like, I want my podcast numbers to stay really strong. So if you go watch on YouTube, I lose my podcast numbers. But I hope that people watch this on YouTube because it's palpable through a screen, just like the embodiment of authenticity with you. You just look like a calm, centered, aligned, I am who I am, bitch. You know what I'm saying? And I'm living for it. Thank you. And before we go, I just have to tell you from a podcast perspective, I have had an idea for a podcast for so many years and I have done nothing. But when I found your podcast and I saw you doing things like walk and talk, and just like get episodes out, like it was no big deal. You inspired me to finally say, I do not need to hire an entire team of people in order to put this thing together. And audio, like, sure, do the best you can. It doesn't matter that much because I will listen to your walk and talk episodes and it's fine. We do better than my produced ones. You know what I mean? And it's so funny because people will write, because I don't, I don't edit the episodes. That's like, a question. I don't edit them. I literally hit publish while I'm taking my walk. And if I see a dog, I'm going to pet that dog. And you're coming along with me on that ride. If I have to pick up my coffee, I'm going to be like, guys, hold on a second. I'm going to pick up my coffee. And a lot of people are like, I feel like I'm on the phone with you. I've had a few people be like, I was talking back to you because I thought that I was on the phone call with you. It's so funny. But like, I think it just goes to show that like, we are in a time specifically also that people value cut the bullshit. And that's why these episodes do significantly triple numbers is what my produced episodes where I'm picking a team for the YouTube and the audio. And, you know, we have the graphics and like everything's approved and everything looks great. It's like, why the fuck am I doing this shit? All I have to do is take a walk and record an episode and pop it up and we're good, you know? Oh my God. But you showed up as an example for me of what was possible and helped me understand that I was spending way too much time in my dick brain building this up into something that it doesn't need to be. Well, thank you. That's so nice to hear. I'm really, I'm excited to hear that. You know, I'm, that's a big part of what I'm trying to do is trying to show people like it's not that fucking serious. You know, this is coming out in the new year. And since we're recording this in almost December, we're recording this in November. But, you know, the big tagline of 2024 is very serious business. And we say that satirically because it's, or sarcastically because it's like, no, it's not. This is not very serious. Like, I, you want to go run a white glove, perfectly luxury business? That's perfectly fine. I'm going to go Macy's my ass and make way more fucking money than you are. Because this is not that serious. We are playful, having fun, being ourselves, making money. And I don't got to do shit to impress you because I'm impressive as I am, period. You know, and I'm, I'm hoping that people embody that a little bit more. So thank you for sharing that with me. That's so powerful. Yeah, yeah of course. Thank you. And thank you for being here. I mean, I'm in love with you. Where can everybody else be in love with you, Erica? Well, I am on both Instagram and TikTok. Those are my spots. Oh, she's no. a TikTok queen. Thank you. I love that. TikTok's new for me, but I'm having fun over there. So come find me there and say hi. I'm sure anyone in your community is going to be somebody that I'll fall in love with too. So yeah, can't wait for that. Amazing. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Unfiltered Entrepreneur. We have the lovely Erica today. Thank you again for being here. We'll catch you on the next episode. See you next time. 
Before we go, I'm inviting you on my mission to help female entrepreneurs, okay? I am a girl's girl, and I want to see every single one of you empowered, living your biggest and boldest life, and the easiest way for people to access free information and a community of like-minded women is by sharing this podcast. Leave a review on Apple, rate us on Spotify, but more than anything, if you liked this episode, please take a screenshot, share it to Instagram, and tag us so we know that you are loving the content, but also other people can see that you are an entrepreneur who is focused on her game. Now remember, the motto of the Team AP space is, it's not hard, it's new. And if nobody has told you this, I want you to remember, you've got this. Entrepreneurship is hard. I love you, I believe in you, and I am so grateful to be in service of you, whether free or paid. And until next time, stay focused, babes.